It's a rivalry renewed and a big time baseball battle in the West End as two of the top programs in the area look to make a move in the standings with just a few games remaining before the playoffs. Welcome to Sportswire. I'm Will Catterley. When it comes to baseball, Godwin and Freeman need no introduction, but both have plenty of past accolades to make this matchup even spicier. Godwin at one point was nationally ranked. Freeman is a defending state champs. Godwin came into the home of the Mavericks with just one loss, while Freeman had just two. One of them earlier in the season to, you guessed it, Mills Godwin on the road. Always a huge game, especially on a Friday night. Mavs looking for revenge from the earlier season. 6-1 loss to Godwin, first inning on the mound, number 29. Came in good, but that pitch not good. A hanging curveball, and Juice Tobin, the juice, is loose. That ball will see ya next time. Second batter of the game, and the Eagles picking up just where they left off. And the number one in his jersey, same as the score. One, nothing, Godwin. So, Eagles looking good, especially when they have this kind of pitching to back it up. Luke Smyers gets Miguel Martin with a strike out there, and then down in the zone, in the zone strike him out. Sit him down, Matthew Britt goes down looking. On the other side of the aisle, came in good, had to be good. Gets the strike out there and then low in the zone, strike him out, sit him out. Number 22 goes down, Jake Harris. He was already down one nothing in the next two innings. Goblin would get a couple of runners on, but he would battle out of damage unscathed. More from number 29, came in good. The one guy couldn't get out, Juice Tobin. Hard ball hit to right, and that's a double. Already juiced two for two, a home run and a double. Godwin saying, let's go. Good saying, well, my defense will be good behind me. The throw to first gets the out, and Freeman again gets out of trouble. Mavs, though, could they get some runs on the board themselves? Breaking through on this pitching staff, Luke Smyers, not easy to do. That'll help number 11. Nolan Rail gets on. We lead to this. Miggy! Mighty Martin knocks that one all the way to the welcome to Kenmore Field. One run scores, and Freeman all of a sudden behind the bat of Miguel Martin has tied it up at one. Following a walk, Freeman's got ducks on the pond. First and second and third. Bases chock full of Mavs. It would lead to this. Ground ball up the middle. Doesn't get through the infield, but it works for a base hit. One run in. Second run comes in to score. A big knock by Jonah Herbert. They call him the Big Hurt Herbert. And yeah, the Mavs are stoked, and they should be down one nothing. All of a sudden, 3-1 lead after three innings of play. Back to Good, who was more than good, especially after the first inning. Strikeout high cheese gets Dylan Hudson. Right there, swinging him is strike three. Good was not good. He was not great, he was fantastic. On the other end, bats kept coming alive. Miggy Martin, a single. Freeman trying to add on to this 3-1 lead. Later, with lead of this. Small ball, champions do it. Smyers trips a little bit, loses his footing. That means they're both safe. They were just trying to move the runner over. Now it's first, second, and third. Bases full of Mavs. Once again, they go to the bullpen to the Eagles. Ball four. Hunter Ross would come in. That would force in a run on the walk. Miguel Martin scores. Four to one, Mavs. And then hit by a pitch. Hitman Herbert takes first. Mavs score another one. This time in the form of Matthew Britt. And the Mavs, don't look now. They have a 5-1 lead. This thing's over. Runner at second, runner at third. Freeman still looking for more. This ball's hit high, it is deep to right, and it is deep enough to score a run. That is called a sacrifice fly. Well done by Lee Sowers. After Charlie Gunn came in in relief for the Eagles. And now this one's elementary. 6-1, last chance for Godwin. Freeman's got a great guy on the mound and Ryan Bland. What could go wrong? Well, they can't get the final out. Got the first one, fine. Well, that runner is safe, pulled the uh, the throw, pulled the first baseman off the bag. 
Now you got runners at first, second, and third for the Eagles. Uh, I've seen greater comebacks from Godwin than just down 6-1. And they ain't done yet. Not by a long shot. That dog will hunt. Base hit to left by Mason. One run scores. Here comes the other. Eagles are right back in it. It's 6-3. Still not finished. Number 22. That is a big blast to Ryan Niddle. Find the gap. It is a gapper. Jake Harris drives home two more. Eagles. Now with the tying run at second, it's six to five. What does number six two Ryan Bland? High cheese fastball, strike him out, sit him down. Freeman survives, and Bland still hasn't breathed a sigh of relief. What a win for Freeman. Freeman and Godwin now, identical records. Season split, both 14 and two. Freeman wins at six five. Meanwhile, a great one in ladies lacrosse. It is deep run at Glen Allen. This one would go down to the wire, but early in this one, it was all about deep run. Take a look, Glen Allen looking for the pass. The keeper finds the wrong jersey, it's stolen. Clear path to that, she shoots, she scores. Maddie Albanese gives deep run the early one, nothing lead. Later on a restart, penalty. Fires finds the back of the net. Georgia Swar. Haven't heard the last of her. 2 0 Wildcats. Still the same score, still in the first half. More Wildcats. Looking, looking. Three defenders. Doesn't matter. She finds the back of the net anyway and shoots and scores. It is Swar once again. 3 0 deep run. Looked like the route was on. But this was a game of momentum changes. And Glenn Allen had answers to everything. Deep run threw at him. Going low, Fires finds it back in that Paige Mayers. Paige Mayers like that so much, she's gonna try that move again, why not? Keep doing it until they can stop you, goes low, finds it back in that again, she shoots, she scores. Mayers and Glen Allen all of a sudden down just three to two. Matter of fact, they come back to tie it at three, deep run. Would reclaim the lead, however, Georgia Swar. Great pass, nice work on the offensive end. Wildcats and Glen Allen put up a bevy of numbers. Deep run would reclaim their three goal lead at 6-3. Looking for more. Pretty pass, great finish as well. It's Maddie Albanese again. Wildcats uh, really on rhythm in offense. But Glen Allen has answers and Paige Mayers was it. I mean, she was the goal scorer for Glen Allen. Puts that one in. Glenn Allen on their way back, still trailing. This shot will help them get even closer. She shoots, she scores. Natalie Macklin, the midfielder. But Wildcats still in the first half. A lot of goals in this one. More answers for them. Coming around the corner, blocked. But uh, no, it goes in. Just off the side of that, she shoots, she scores. It's eight to five. Credit that one to number 21, Maggie Brogan, second half. Wildcats looking for a strong second half start, and they get it. She shoots, she scores, it's Georgia Swar. Georgia Swar all over the place in this one. They would have a 10-5 lead at that point. About ready to pack up, but Glenn Allen says, don't leave yet, we are not done. Somehow that finds the back of the net. She shoots, she scores. Jags, right back in the swing of things. And Glenn Allen not finished quite yet. Here they come again on offense. Poking, prodding, looking, and firing, and firing the back of the net. She shoots, she scores. That one is from Gray Kaplinger, the midfield junior. Puts her name into the score ledger. Moments later, go to number one, Paige Mayers. Glenn Allen, once down 10 to five. A chance here to get close to even. It's blocked, but the ball does cross the net. So the Jags come almost all the way back. And all of a sudden, they're just down 11 to 10. A chance to tie it right here, but oh, just lost the ball. Huge moment there that would have tied it at 11. Instead, deep run's gonna get it. And they're going to finish it. Pass inside. Easy squeezy lemon peasy. Maddie Albanese gets the Biggest goal of the game right there to finish off a feisty Glen Allen Jags team. 12-10, your final. 
We hit the pitch and we come back as two East End rivals collide. Highland Springs plays host of Orion and Ladies Soccer, plus Deep Run takes on Freeman and Guys Tennis, where doubles would determine the winner. That and more straight ahead. Todd's a great guy. I mean, look at him. What a sweetheart. Attaboy. Wait, Todd, what are you doing? How totally selfish and untod like of you. Come on, Todd. Come on, man. Welcome back to Sportswire East End Soccer. We go lady style. It's Verona, it's Highland Springs, and it's a Springers with an early breakaway. She shoots, she scores. Taylor Fang doing her thing. And Highland Springs with an early 1-0 advantage with 18.42 to go in change. More from the Springers, more opportunities. Chance right here is fired on net. Nobody home for Highland Springs crossing. Keeper does a nice job keeping one out of the net. And yeah, it's very sunny on the other side. Check out close. This one came right off the woodwork. Rebound cleared away. Verina had plenty of chances. That was one of them. Still first half, still down one, nothing. Right on the keeper. She says no. Nice save. Estani Barmo, and it is still one, nothing. We go to the second, but Turnover in the defensive end. Oh, the shot just goes wide. Number four, Claire Utsi. And oopsies, that one just goes off the woodwork again. Second time, Verina has hit one off the post or the crossbar. It's still 1-0. Highland Springs looking for more. And they get it. She shoots, she scores. It actually went off the foot of one of the Verina players. They credit the goal to the closest Springer, I guess. Either way, Highland Springs has a 2-0 lead. Still 2-0, not done yet is Verina. She shoots, she scores off the steal. The pressure on the defensive end works again, this time for a goal. Doha Al Barazi finds the back of the net and it is tied, or not tied. Now they're down two to one. Later, however, off a Verina corner, Highland Springs gets it, and they're in transition. And nobody else but number 13, Taylor Fang. And that would do it. Fang sinks the teeth into Verina, and Highland Springs wins this one. Three to one, you're fine. From East End Soccer to some West End Track and Field, 300 meter hurdles. This one was all about Atlee and Benedictine. Atlee, Benedictine, Freeman, Deep Run, Godwin, St. Gertrude, Mechanicsville, number of teams involved at this meet. But it would be Luke Chantre who would take first place for Atlee, time 43.93, and Carter Menard for Atlee, 44.43. To the girls, 100 meters. And this would come down to the wire, but check out lane number four. Hermitage gets it done. Eden Ramirez, 12.78. Well done. She not only won the girls 100, she won the girls 200 with a time of 26.31. Freeman finished second, Goblin third in the 100. Guys, 100. Deep run going to win. Going away here. Noah Arjona finishing first place at a time of 11.34 seconds. Lawrence Jefferson of Freeman second. Holden Barber of Deep Run with a third place finish. On to the girls, 1600. Yeah, we go from the 100 meters sprints to the mile, basically. And this was basically a one horse race. Check out Mills Godwin coming up and lapping St. Gertrude's runner, Bridget Blazak of Godwin. Five minutes, 25.76 seconds. Atley, Tegan Gilhooley finishes second. Freeman, third and fourth. And Charlotte Gardner and Juliet Gardner, respectively, first place to Mills Godwin. On to the guys, 1,600 meters. Plenty of strong county finishers in this one. Matter of fact, the top 12 all were, but these two, it was a two-horse race. 
Emmett Townsend of Freeman takes first. And John Grayson Schmidt, a deep run second. Bra Brady Walker for Mills Godwin finishes in third. Speaking of Godwin, this runner was fantastic. Girls 800 meters, Jayla Wirtz in first place. Just ahead of Sydney Yarima of Deep Run and Josie Rempe of Atley. But this was Jayla Wirtz race to win and she did it in 57.44 seconds and sydney arima pretty good as well for deep run second place 59.51 here come the guys there's good old tom beasy he's always there taking pictures has a heck of a track career himself look out in lane one glad i didn't swing around deep runs tyler messinger congratulations to him First place finish, 50.55 seconds. He beats Aisa Abdul Kudus of Mills Goblin, who's finished in second with 51.44. How about a few field events? Deep run, looking good in the triple. Ava Squire, a jump of 32, five and a half feet. Good enough for second place overall. Long jump, that's Goblin's Caitlin Griffin. 16 feet, five inches, good for second place. Deep run, boys and girls. Teams take the title. Tennis, anyone? Guys, tennis, it's deep run. It's Freeman. Both these teams with winning records coming in. Number ones, they're good friends. Zach Fleischman, who you just saw, get an ace right there in the far court versus Dylan Chow of Douglas Freeman. But they are big-time competitors at the number one positions for their respective teams when they're on the court against each other. Nice long rally here and a beautiful slice. And... The finish as well as that ball goes out. Dylan Chow looking good in this one. This was back and forth. It would go three sets. Best out of three win. Great shot there right at the net. And then right in your living room, look out. Point. Wildcats. More from the number ones. These two were great. I could have sat here all day, but it would just be these two I'm showing highlights of. So I didn't do that. I moved. That ball is out, point Fleischman, but Dylan Chow gets the win overall, 4-6, 6-3, 10-7. Freeman, a nice start from the number ones. Number twos, Grant Kruzma in the front court you see there in the blue for deep run. That's point for him. Taking on Daniel Lim in the far court doing the serve. Lim, top spin action. That's in your living room as well. They're playing to the camera, these guys. <laughs> I'm telling you what. Again, great play at number twos as well. Lim again on the serve. Back and forth we go. Strong battle between these two as well. Off the front of the net. And again, going for the winner right at the camera. Daniel Lim against Kruzma gets the win. 6-2, 7-5. Now, this is where things turned around at number three in the front court. Can't quite get to that one is James Anderson, Mr. Anderson. Taking on Andrew Lee, you just saw right there. And Anderson on the serve. Remember, deep run lost one and two. But at number three, that's when they started their comeback. And uh, shots like that would help. That one goes long. James Anderson falls to Andrew Lee, seen serving here. Andrew Lee going to get the first win for Deep Run on the afternoon. This game played at Deep Run at home for the Wildcats. And back and forth these two would go. This group of three, or the third group I should say, that ball goes long again. Andrew Lee with the victory. Was just the start of things to come for the Wildcats as we'll get to the number fours in a minute. Great shot here, though. I had to show this one. Winner, winner, chicken dinner, Anderson. But again, he loses 6-3, 6-1. It was the things that were going to start coming for the Wildcats. Uh, a harbinger of good things to come, I should say. Aiden June of Deep Run taking on Jake Johnson of Freeman in the far court. Johnson can't get to that one. You see Deep Run win number three. And then in number four, it would be Aiden June 
in the front court, getting the win against Jake Johnson, 6-1, 6-1. They would go on to win at number five as well. So they went at three, four, and five, does deep run. They would lose six. Freeman's Mr. Martin would take that one, but they would win all three doubles matches and win this one, 6-3. Well, we head to Glen Allen when we come back as the Jags have a wild one with Manchester in softball and the upstart Lady Tucker Tigers get a test from Maggie Walker in ladies soccer. That's next. Happening. This can't be happening. Of course it's not happening. Armored car. <laughs> Listen, having money isn't about luck. Make your own coffee, save a thousand bucks a year. Feed me. Feed the pig. Welcome back to Sportswire. How about some crazy softball action? Glenn Allen at home against Manchester. Bases full of Lancers. Tharp gets a great play from her shortstop to complete the throw to third and get in the double play. Uh, and uh, this Manchester team, they could hit the softball. So can Glenn Allen. Bottom one, Maeve Hahn drives home a run with a stand-up triple, no doubt. And Glenn Allen on the board up one nothing. Where that came from, infield shot, the throw to first in time, but it goes as an RBI ground out as Hahn crosses home. And there'd be more where that came from, still in the first. Wild pitch. That scores number five, Kaylee Garner. And just like that, Glenn Allen has a three to nothing lead. Tharp back in the circle. Tharp was sharp against number 13, Taylor Hendrick. I think she struck her out three times. Look out! That almost hit me in the face. Thank goodness for the fence. In the second, though, runner comes home to score there. And then the boom stick all the way to the wall. Here come the Lancers. One run scores. And it's an RBI double for Manchester. They were not finished, at least according to the center fielder, they were. Nice looking play by Alyssa Mehard. And uh, Lancers plate two in the second, so it's three to two. Bottom half. Here come Glenn Allen again. That's a base hit. That dog will hunt. Two runs come in to score. And here come the Glen Allen Jaguars once again. The two-bagger by Tyra Christian makes it 5-2. to two. Okay, I hope you're keeping score at home. Lancers would not stop hitting. That's a gapper. All the way to the wall, number 23 doing the honors. Mia Wolfhook. They would not pitch to her again after that, by the way. They would give her intentional walk. That base hit, that'll work as well. Kat Connell would drive home Wolfhook. Connell scores it. And Tharp's like, what do I got to do here? These girls can really hit the softball. And they would continue to. That ball just gets away. Number 10, driving home a run in Sadie Dempster. Manchester on a roll here. That ball. Bases loaded in this position. Strike him out. Sit him down. Steps on home for the force out. Because she dropped the ball. It's 5-4. Going to the fourth. And she make that the fifth. Lancers making the out at first, but no, first baseman can't corral it. Much needed insurance run for Glenn Allen as number 15 crosses at Ashton Limbach. And then that's a CNI single right back where it came from up the middle. One run scores, two run score. All the way to third goes Alyssa Meharg. And Glenn Allen was staked to a 8 4 lead in the sixth, but then the Lancers came back. Ava Lester in the pitch. The throw away to third when they had runners at scoring position at second and third. Then the base hit drives home one. Number 18 doing the honors, Nat Trout. No relation to Mike Trout. I don't think so. That's a base hit to left. One Lancer in. Here comes another. She will score in Sadie Dempster. And a great two-bag RBI by Sarah Connell. By the time the dust settled, it's 10-8 Lancers. We go to the seventh. Glenn Allen. Needs a walk-off. Tyra Christian, that ball will see you next time. Solo shot gets Glenn Allen within one. It's now 10 to nine, but they're down to their final out. 
Jags need base runners. They need a run to extend this. Ground ball to short, and this is why you have a tall first baseman. So they can make plays like that. The super stretch and the Lancers steal this one from Glenn Allen in the sixth. 10-9 the final. Let's go to ladies soccer, shall we? Tucker taking on Maggie Walker. Tigers' best start in a long time. Seven and five going into this one. Taking on a tough Maggie Walker squad. Now the keeper's been really good. Simone Colum Darolu has been terrific for Tucker. She's been standing on her head in a lot of these matches. Couldn't stop this great set piece. Cannot get to that one. She shoots, she scores. The header is good. Number 10, Aaron Neary. Doesn't nearly put Maggie Walker up 1-0. She does. Moments later, still first half highlights. Just a great passing team. Look at that. Splitting the defense. No offsides called. Number 21. Her versus Simone, and she gets it done. She shoots. She scores. Casey Johnson gives the Green Dragons a 2-0 lead. Still 30 minutes to go in the first half. More from Maggie Walker, but Simone makes a big stop. Colm Darolu all over that one. Tell you, she has been fantastic for this Tucker team. And then Tigers get a real shot here. All alone, one on one. Number three's got a shot and oh, it is saved. Cameron Schwartz, but Schwartz was not with her on that one as the Maggie Walker cut down the angle and made the stop right here. Maggie Walker again showing their prowess for great passing and then finishing. She shoots, she scores. Number 14 this time, Caroline DeGunther, captain midfielder, gives Maggie Walker the insurmountable 3-0 lead. Of course, I've seen stranger things in soccer, but second half action, more from Maggie Walker. Great stop, and another. And finally, can't quite get to that one. You can't blame Simone on that play. She shoots, she scores. Maggie Walker makes it 4-0 at that point. Tucker had a few chances, but Green Dragons get this one. 4-0, you're fine. Remember, if you have questions or comments about the show, just send me an email to this address, sportswire at henrico.k12.va.us. And you can always follow us on Twitter and watch us on YouTube. I can't wait to see you next time on SportsWire.